All right, my name is Josh Faust, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Arviz. Um, so, what is Arviz? Arviz is our 3D visualization environment. Uh, Arviz lets you see from the robot's perspective what it's seeing, all of its sensor data, um, anything through its cameras, its lasers. Uh, for the nav stack, which you haven't learned about yet, you can see all of its path planning, things like that. Uh, and there, so there are two ways of getting data into Arviz. There are certain things that uh, Arviz knows about intrinsically on its own, like point clouds and laser scans, uh, cameras, things like that. And then you can also, there are marker messages where you can send data to Arviz uh, and show essentially whatever you want, things like arrows, boxes, cubes, point clouds. Um, and so everything you're seeing here is generally a combination of those two. It's going to be uh, certain things that Arvis knows about that you can just set up these displays and then other things such as the lines and the arrows and all this stuff. This was actually set up by Peter Pastor who's here today. Most of this talk is going to be a live demonstration. I'm going to be showing features, demonstrating exactly how to use things. Uh, that's going to be about 45 minutes. And then the rest of it's going to be playtime for you guys. Uh, playing around, whether it's doing sensor data, sending markers, things like that. Um, I know some of you have already been using this stuff. I've seen it. That's awesome. Uh, hopefully things are still working. So first thing to note uh, for trying to run Arviz on your own, um, you need a 3D card and you need the correct drivers. Generally, this means proprietary drivers that do not necessarily come installed on your system. Um, recommended cards, anything recent from NVIDIA. Uh, Intel cards will work in some configurations, but slowly. Uh, and ATI cards should work, but we don't have any in the building, so it's hard to know without direct experience. You need access to real hardware. Virtualized environments uh, at this point in time do not work. Uh, and you need a three button mouse, which will be something that I'm going to take care of through Sea Turtle. But for now, in order to fully move about the scene, you need three buttons. <coughs> All right, so live demos. Uh, feel free to follow along if you'd like, but again, you're going to have a lot of time towards the end to just sort of play around. So if, you, uh, if you're not following along, don't worry about trying to catch up. I think your robot went dead. Did my robot go dead? All right, so to start Arviz, um, you just rust run Arviz Arviz. So the first thing you're going to see when Arviz comes up is a whole lot of nothing. Um, there are a whole bunch of these little windows, uh, most of which you just don't need to worry about for right now, so I'm going to close them. Um, something you should know is that you can drag them around, you can redock them, you can put them wherever you want. Um, a lot of people don't realize that until they're shown it. Um, so for now, I'm just going to close most of these uh, and maximize things. And this big black thing up here that's not showing anything is the 3D view. Uh, and it's not showing anything because there's nothing, we haven't told it to show anything. Um, and the, the place where you tell it to show things is over here in this displays window. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to get back to this a little bit later as to why I'm doing this, I'm going to change the fixed frame to base link. Um, and you'll notice that double status just went to OK, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, so like I said before, there are two different ways of adding data into Arviz. One of them is called a display. To add a display, there's this Add button down on the bottom left. Um, and that's going to pop up what may be an empty box. If it's an empty box, you can go to plugins and load the built-in plugin. I'm going to add again. Uh, so it's going to bring up this box with a whole bunch of different display types. Um, and if you select a display type, it's going to tell you a little bit about what that display does. Uh, and it may have a link to more information that will likely take you to the wiki. Uh, so I'm just going to add a grid here. Uh, and Hopefully you can see um, there's now this sort of this grid in the world. Now when I added the grid, 
there are a whole bunch of properties that come up on the left uh, that you can't read right now because of the prior font sizes. Um, and every display is going to have a different set of properties that will let you configure it and show things exactly how you want to show them. Uh, so for example, if you want a red grid, you can make it red. Right now it's a little, it's alphaed out so you can see through it. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better as a grid. Um, make it bigger, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, you can also change the line style to make it billboards. It'll actually have physical size in the world. Lines are a single pixel wide on screen. So we've got a grid. It's not actually very interesting because it's not taking any data from the robot. It's not showing you anything useful. Um, the first useful thing that I'm going to try and show you uh, after I reset the breakers again uh, is the robot model. So if you add the robot model display, you'll notice down in the middle, because I'm pretty far away, uh, there's this little model of the robot. Uh, and so you can see, I have the laser tilting. I've got some stuff running on there. Uh, and this is going to show you the robot in real time, exactly how it should look. And if it's well calibrated, it'll, it'll look exactly where it should be. Um, so Melanie's moving the arm. You're seeing the arm move in Arvis. Uh, moving the head, moving essentially any of the joints. Um, so right now I'm showing the visual representation of the robot. There's also a collision representation, uh, which looks about like this. Um, we have some better meshes coming in for Sea Turtle that will look a bit more like the final robot. Um, and you can do things like set alpha, so you can see through and, and see individual joints. Um, one of the other things you can do on here that's somewhat useful is uh, you can add a, you can show axes on a link, so you can so it, see exactly where it is. You can also see the position and orientation uh, as defined in the, the fixed frame that's set. And then if you click show trail, it only moves around the arm. Uh, it'll draw a trail behind. Uh, whatever link you've told it to. So one of the next most useful displays uh, are the laser skin and point cloud displays. So these are essentially identical, but uh, they take different types of data. Um, and so this is a display where you actually have to choose which ROS topic you want to be uh, visualizing anything from. So if you click on the topic, you'll see this dot, dot, dot button uh, over here. That's going to pop up uh, a little box asking which, which topic you want to subscribe to. And it's only going to show you topics that this display can actually listen to. So I'm going to choose tilt scan. Uh, and you'll see the tilting laser. Um, now, with the tilting laser, it's not actually all that useful. You just see the one scan. So what I'm going to do is set the decay time to something a little bit higher, like 10 seconds, and it's going to start accumulating data. Uh, and you can see Melanie right there in that data. It's on about a two second sweep, so I'm going to set it to two seconds. Uh, and so you can see it replacing itself as it sweeps up and down. Let's see, that red background is a little bit annoying. So. 